Hi everybody, my name's Enda Wiley. I'm a poet and I also write poems and stories for children. Um, and I'm here in my house with my dog Oscar, a lovely golden cocker spaniel. He's got his paw on the book and he's ready to hear my poem. It's called Bully and I hope you enjoy it. You are a sharp pencil in my side during every class. A robber of all the homework I do. A smiling sweet face to the teacher, but a hissing green-eyed demon to me. You are cruel glass in the playground, a towering wall that blocks my way home. You push, kick, bruise, taunt, sneer, laugh at me. There is nowhere you won't find me. My nights and mornings have your cruel stare. But there'll come a time when you'll fall down, when you'll cry out, when you'll be left alone. Then who will help you up? Dry your eyes, brush dust from your knees, gently wash your cuts clean. Who will take your hand and walk home with you? When I go into the school that I work in, we have a great catchphrase and it is, um, be a buddy, a buddy and not a bully. And I think that's a really good thing to remember. Um, and we try to encourage everyone to respect each other and to be kind. And one day I thought I'd like to really get into the mind of what it would feel like to be a bully and to be bullied. And when you're a writer, I think one of the best things you can do is use your imagination and dig deep and become somebody that you aren't necessarily when you walk around the house every day. And a poem for me is very much like an imaginary washing line. You hang little pictures on it. And in this poem, Bully, that I read to you, it's filled with images, little uh, word pictures. And I'm sure some of you know what a metaphor is. Um, a metaphor is when you, you describe something but you don't use as or like. So in my poem, Bully, there were lots of metaphors. You may have heard them. And they all kind of built up. Uh, you are sharp glass in the playground. Uh, you are a towering wall that blocks my way home. I'm not using as or like. I'm making a big list of images which build and build and build so that you feel quite tense when you're reading it. Um, and then in the, the last section of my poem, Bully, um, I wanted to really think about what it would feel like to be a bully. We don't like to be bullied, but imagine being a bully. I don't think I would like that very much. And in the last verse, I imagine, well, if the bully keeps bullying, nobody wants to hang out with them or play with them or, you know, um, see them after school or go to the cinema or watch TV with them or play football with them. So um, that's why I wrote that last verse. And it's really quite a lonely and that's really good. And I hope that my poem, when you read it, you feel a lot as well. You feel for the person who's bullied, but you also feel for the bully. Um, so really, that's, that's, that's my story about my poem. Um, I've been writing poems since I was very young, I think since I was seven or eight or nine, and I've always been filling notebooks um, with poems. In fact, I have a, a notebook here to show you. Um, I know I go into a lot of schools and libraries and I meet with children and talk about writing, and, and some children seem to think it's a really mysterious thing. It is mysterious when a poem falls on a page, but really a notebook looks probably just like all, a writer's notebook looks just like the notebooks you have in your school or at home. You can see I'm scribbling, there's a little bit of chocolate there, it's just falling on the ground. So lots of little scribbles and things. Um, I carry notebooks with me everywhere and I wanted to show you this today just to see. And then um, if you look at this book, To Wait to This, and you turn to the first page, the scribbles in my notebook became this little poem here about Freya. Um, Um, when I was a child, I was very lucky because there were books everywhere in the house. Um, my dad was a really, really strong reader and so was my mum. And so I used to think the books were like kind of little animals around the house. Uh, we're filming in my house now and there are books everywhere as well. And I live with a poet um, and he reads a lot as well. So books have always been a part of my life. I think if you want to be a poet or a writer, you have to read. And I'm sure in your classes or at home you have books as well and you can go to the library. Libraries are brilliant places. Um, so reading is really how I first started. Um, there was a writer called Enid Blyton that I used to read. I know lots of children now read people like um, 
you know, they read J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter and books like that. But we, we used to love reading Enoch Blyton. It was full of adventures. And I grew up in a, um, very close to John Leary, which is on the south side of Dublin by the sea. So we were always down by the water um, or up in Killiney Hill running through the forests. Um, and we had a house with a garden which, which went um, into a, a, another old house with orchards and things. So I had quite a magical childhood. And I think that does feed into your imagination. Um, my mother was a brilliant woman for encouraging us to do things. Um, I never wanted to do anything she asked me to do, except I, I really did want to write. So um, one day I wrote a poem about a monster. I think I was about nine or ten. And um, it was kind of a funny poem. It went, my monster's name is Groggles. He's got toes that like to woggles. Very badly rhymed and um, it went on and on and his favorite meal was bread and jam and he loved to eat babies that sit in their pram so it's kind of a crazy poem but I threw it away and I think writers sometimes do that they think that what they write isn't very good and I scrunched up the paper and I threw it away and my mother she came into the kitchen and she picked it up and she read it and then she got the iron out and she ironed the poem and I thought she was crazy which she probably was and she put it in an envelope and off she went um, and I didn't see the poem again until a couple of months later a letter came to our house and it said that my monster's name is Groggles, brilliant title, had won um, a competition in a, in a poetry competition and there were five of us in our family and a dog so my mum, my dad, the five children and the dog we all jumped in the car and we drove all the way to Cork um, from Dublin and I was given um, a big heavy book um, by a professor with a long beard and we were all thrilled but I suppose really the point of the story is um, I was glad to win the prize and that was good but I think the best thing of all for me was that um, my mum had said to me yeah you can do it I think that's a good poem you can do it and I'm sure in your class or at home you've got people or friends or mums and dads or teachers who say the same things to you and I think as a writer it is nice to get a bit of encouragement like that and from then on I just kept writing and writing and writing. So don't ever think that an idea is something that you should just throw away. Do write it down, do keep it in your notebook, keep it in your heart and keep it in your head and you never know when that poem is going to walk into your life and fill a page.